This video was requested by my channel member John Eastwood. If you wish to request more review on the channel, please consider clicking the join button below to become a channel member for a small amount each month. Back in 1967, Paul Newman gave us one of the coolest movie characters of all time, the world shaker himself, Cool Hand Luke. Directed by Stuart Rosenberg, Cool Hand Luke tells the story of Luke Jackson, a charismatic and rebellious prisoner who challenges the corrupt police system in the early 1950s. The legendary Paul Newman plays Cool Hand Luke, and it's one of the most memorable performances of all time. He just oozes that old school movie star charm. They really don't make actors like this anymore. Luke's personality and irresistible smile makes him a character you can't help but love. That iconic smile just becomes the heart of the film and his magnetic charisma inspires the prisoners around him. They all get cast under his spell, but the great thing about Luke is he does it all effortlessly simply by being himself. While he spends a lot of the film being this figure who laughs in the face of authority, his character has a lot of dimension and it's that element of vulnerability that takes this performance from super cool to super powerful. As the film goes on, Luke slowly shows his sensitive side and we see what he's possibly struggling with behind the eyes and he proves himself to be an incredibly human character. He's not just a caricature spending the whole film jovially putting the middle finger up and coasting through. Instead, when he does do all that, he ends up feeling real genuine consequences and punishment. It's a film that doesn't sugarcoat the results of being someone like Luke but at the same time it makes it clear that it's worth him paying that price, it's worth him existing so that he can inspire hope, the idea of rebellion and of course never giving up, even in the toughest of situations. Although Luke has committed a crime, he shows himself to be a decent stand up guy who may not be perfect but is certainly someone you would love to have your back. However, he has to prove that to the other inmates, who are not very trusting and don't have a lot of hope left or a lot of enthusiasm for life. And the film is about the interactions that he has with the other prisoners and how they slowly gain respect and affection for this character who is described several times as a world shaker. You don't listen much, do you, boy? I ain't heard that much worth listening to. There's a lot of guys laying down a lot of rules and regulations. Once they understand and appreciate him, he becomes their inspiration. He manages to reawaken a sense of hope and happiness that these prisoners lost a long time ago. His relationship with Dragline, played by George Kennedy, starts off rocky as Dragline is not used to someone speaking their mind and doing things their own way. The two men continue to clash until they have a brutal boxing match in the police yard, which is a down and dirty, incredibly brutal scene that shows Luke's refusal to give up and stay down. After he's got up so many times, Dragline walks away and stops beating him, and it's a very powerful moment showing that he has learned to respect Luke's resilience. Dragline also shows respect for him when he plays poker and wins by bluffing, earning his nickname of Cool Hand Luke. Sometimes nothing can be a real cool hand. Mm -hmm. sit in here next to my boy. Luke depicts the power of individuality, endurance, resilience and the impact one person can have on others when they need it the most. However, I don't think the film sends the message that Luke wants to be seen as a hero. Even though the inmates idolise him, he doesn't want to be worshipped. Instead, he wants all men to go their own way and this attitude lends his character a grounded and humble nature that makes him even more likeable. I still cannot get over the egg scene. It's a scene where Luke eats 50 eggs. It's bonkers. Dragline bets the other inmates that Luke can devour 50 eggs in a certain amount of time. And it's a perfect example of the enigma that Luke creates around himself. Why he agreed to do this is not completely clear. It could be that he wanted to build camaraderie and do something for the inmates to get behind, or he wanted to change the paradigm in an absurd way. Or maybe he was just bored. The film never makes it clear whether he's actually doing these world shaking things because he entertains him and it's just who he is or if it's all premeditated. But either way he changes the world around him for whatever the reason. 
The scene itself is just very memorable. It's a unique set piece full of quirky energy. And it's something people had never seen before, which is the fundamentals of a classic movie scene. You can imagine this being ingrained in people's minds and going on those lists of classic movie moments. As I've mentioned, the film does have a lot of heart to it. There's an incredibly tender and heartfelt scene when Luke's mother comes to visit him. She is sick and does not have long left and this exchange between them is incredibly well delivered and pulls at your heartstrings. You almost forget you're watching a film in this scene because it truly does feel like a mother and her son talking. Actress Jo Van Fleet and Paul Newman strike up such a heartwarming and genuine back and forth. Luke clearly feels bad that he has ended up in prison but his mother shows him unconditional love and doesn't hold it against him. They share laughs but also short moments of clear despair and sadness that things turned out as they did. Well, yeah, things are just never the way they, they see, Marletta. You know that, a man's gotta go his own way. Guess I just gotta, gotta love you and let go, hmm? I guess. The scene perfectly captures the beauty of human relationships also the sad truth that your mistakes affect your loved ones and it's sometimes too late to mend the wounds. The distance between them with Luke outside the car looking in is incredibly symbolic, perhaps a metaphor for the barrier that Luke has unintentionally created between himself and his family because of his mistakes. His mother attempts to break down that distance by telling him that she doesn't hold it against him, but nonetheless that wall remains because Luke can't turn back time. The scene could have easily been overly emotional, with Luke and his mother being allowed to touch, weeping and embracing each other, but instead the film chooses to keep them apart, yet it still hits incredible emotional beats. It's a real, true, honest, understanding conversation that says everything in just a few minutes. Another very emotional moment in the film is when the other inmates catch Luke alone, singing to himself. He clearly has memories, people he misses, regret and yearning. So while he displays this bravado and smile and has a lot of hero worship directed at him, he's an incredibly relatable character who feels what we all feel deep down inside. Paul Newman's touching delivery in this scene really hits me like a punch in the gut. It's such a gentle and meaningful moment for the character. Going on 90, I ain't scary cause I got the Virgin Mary assuring me that I won't go home. Cool Hand Luke shows the harshness of the prison system at the time and the film doesn't shy away from showing him go through extreme physical trials at the hands of the relentless prison guards. One of the most devastating scenes is when Luke's escape attempt is punished through forcing him to continually dig from day to night until he breaks down and begs. It's an incredibly uncompromising scene and you feel the exhaustion and hopelessness of the situation. It's up for debate whether Luke really means it when he begs for mercy, as Dragline believes he put it on to con the guards. However, Luke even admits in a conversation with Dragline that it was genuine. While Luke is clearly genuinely vulnerable at other moments in the film, this one is up for discussion. I mean, you could understand it as this was Luke's final moment of being completely broken and there's no shame in him begging for his life. But at the same time, you could believe like Dragline does that this event kept up the enigma of Luke. The begging wasn't truly real and it was Luke playing yet another classic cool hand bluff. Cool Hand Luke really has this feeling of desperation, yearning, a desire for freedom running throughout. Luke's heart continues to beat underneath all the pain in the dominating world, and he refuses to let go of his desire to run, to be free, to not have his fate determined by another person. Luke cannot turn that off, and he represents a lost generation at the time, who had become jaded with America and the idea of having their fate either decided by being sent to war, or going into a prison system that was just as corrupt as any criminal in it. Cool Han Luke examines belief in God and something more. We know Luke is a free spirit who wants to transcend the order of the world, but at the same time he cannot bring himself to believe in a higher power because he feels that entity has deserted him. Newman's speeches really do pull at your heartstrings and hit home deeply because we all at some point in life have grappled with these ideas 
and we fully understand that in a situation like this, the dilemma would hit even harder. The fantastic final scene really does sum all this up. Luke is at the end of his rope and genuinely speaks to whatever is out there, but at the same time he's coming to terms with the fact that he could be alone in the universe and that if this god does exist, he could very well be as much of an adversary as the systems Luke has been fighting all his life. So if you haven't seen Cool Hand Luke, I highly recommend the film, so thank you so much to John for the recommendation. If you have seen it, let's talk about it in the comments below. Thanks for watching and if you enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing for more analysis and retrospectives for passionate movie geeks. And I'll see you guys next time.